welcome to the 24th annual Columbia Values Diversity Celebration. I am Monica Naylor, and I will represent the event planning committee today as the mistress of ceremonies. We would like to thank the Bill Thompson Four for the wonderful musical experience during our breakfast. Let's give them a hand. Please stand while the Columbia Fire Department Honor Guard presents the colors and we enjoy the singing of our national anthem by Lamont Walker. remain standing for the honor guard to leave and for an invocation written by members of Faith Voices of Columbia and presented by Maha Hamed, Reverend Sarah Clausen, and Reverend Charity Goodwin. Creator, we gather for a time on this day as people of many backgrounds, belief, and experiences of life. We gather to share a dream, inherited from many ancestors, prophets, teachers, and saints, in the perpetual struggle for justice and the constant work of hope. We gather to share a dream, inherited and reimagined again and again by ordinary people powered by extraordinary love. We gather to share a dream of a beloved community where every person, every person, every person is valued and empowered to thrive. This dream is not yet reality. In our world, in our country, in our city, amid disparity of income and opportunity, amid disparity of compassion and hope. But it is a dream that always still could be. This dream is easy to speak, but hard to live. This dream requires more than words, no matter how beautiful. More than intentions, no matter how noble. More than promises, no matter how sincere. More than a breakfast, no matter how nourishing. 
This dream requires our ongoing commitment, our bodies in the work of solidarity, our hearts open and tender, our hands reaching out. As we join together on this day, recommitting ourselves to this dream and its challenge, let us gather together the tools we need to build the world we dream of. The world of liberty and justice for all where refugees find sanctuary, where the gifts of immigrants are welcomed with gratitude where society finally reflects the truth that black lives matter. Where persons with disabilities are recognized for their gifts. Where love is love and love is love and all genders are celebrated. Where our Muslim siblings in faith are welcome and safe and religious persecution is not tolerated. Where the sky is the limit for women the world over. Where there is flourishing for each and all. Let us gather together the tools we need to build this world we dream of. Deep and open listening, especially to those least heard. Clear and clear careful thinking, especially in dynamics of power and privilege. Willing hands and feet and arms and backs and bodies in the struggle. All the resources of our most deeply held faith or treasured ethics, and most of all, every one of our hearts tender and true and willing to be transformed. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Thank you. On the stage, you can see three mural banners created by resident arts director and lead artist Madeleine Lemieux, and teen artists from the City of Columbia's Parks and Recreation Career Awareness Related Experience Program. You may be seated. This artwork serves as the backdrop for today's celebration representing our theme, Building an Inclusive Columbia. Read more about the artwork in your program. Also in your program, you will find a calendar of community events that commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. On the back of your program, please find the many financial sponsors of the diversity celebration. We are sure that you have seen their company and organization names in the media, on our screens, and in the written program. Without their financial support, our event would not be possible. There is a sponsor that joined us after the program was printed, and we want to recognize them now. Much thanks to friend sponsor, Congregation Beth Shalom, for your support. Also listed in the program are the many people involved in the planning and coordination of this event. This includes the members of the Columbia Values Diversity Celebration Planning Committee, which represents the diversity of our community as well as staff from the City of Columbia. The committee would like to give special thanks to city staff members Sarah Dresser and Joyce Jelena from the Office of Cultural Affairs for their tireless commitment to the success of this event. Now I would like to invite to the stage two youth Kindness Ambassadors for the Children's Grove, a nonprofit organization working to inspire a culture of kindness as a pathway to mental and emotional health in children, youth, and young adults through the arts and education. Rockbridge High School students, Yash Paul Kana and Madison Hopper will share original writings 
on inclusion and kindness. Hello, my name is Yashpal Kanna, and I will be presenting an original poem titled Benevolence. An act is not bought, an act is not sold. An act of kindness is gentle yet bold. The kindness in our world needs to be meant. We need kindness in our world, so please do not misrepresent. We go about our lives seeking kindness every day. Yet strangely, when it happens, it takes our breath away. All it takes is a single act of kindness to bring this world a unique kind of brightness. All it takes is a single act of kindness, but when it comes to it, some feel a degree of shyness. We look out to our world, it looms a certain sorrow. We need to realize that there's healing in tomorrow. For there is an act of kindness for each of us to extend, and whomever receives it will know great dividends. We see tragedy with no kindness for remedy. We must stop this apathy and show our hearts readily. These acts of kindness can overcome tragedy, bring us to tangency. Let's rally together to change this weather. No rain, no snow, just kindness that we know. Make kindness a normality, something which is a commonality. An act is not bought, and an act is not sold. To change a life forever, we all need to be gentle, yet bold. Do you remember back in elementary school when your teacher would bring in the butterfly house with some caterpillars crawling around inside? It always meant something good was about to happen. My favorite part of watching the butterflies was when the butterfly actually shed its chrysalis and unfurled its colorful wings. Similar to the butterfly effect, one seemingly small change in our behavior can have a dramatic impact on our society. A random act of kindness is a selfless act performed by someone with the intention of helping or cheering up another person. A simple Google search of random acts of kindness yields over two million results. There are so many small ways that we can make a big difference. They can affect just one person or many people. These actions show your ability to care for those around you. After a caterpillar is transformed into a butterfly, the new butterfly can break out of its cocoon and show the world its colors. Random acts of kindness can have a butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is the idea that a single butterfly flapping its wings on one side of the globe can, in theory, start a hurricane on the other. One small change can make a big impact. You could completely change someone's day just by smiling at them. By sharing your kindness, you can encourage others to share kindness, like you did. According to the results of a questionnaire conducted by the motivational website stageoflife.com, 88% of teens have been the recipients of random acts of kindness. Of those, 85% wanted to go out and pass along this kindness. Kindness can be infectious. It can spread from one person to another to another in an ever-expanding circle. Similar to the butterfly effect, one small act of kindness can cause a large change in our world. Random acts of kindness can proliferate the positive and kind behaviors in our society. Aesop, the author of Aesop's Fables, stated that no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Though Aesop was a fictitious author, this is no myth. One small act of kindness has a larger change on the world than any one intention. Thank you. On your table, you will find a compilation of writings by students of the fourth through 12th grades from schools throughout Columbia. McDonald's Restaurants of Columbia has again generously sponsored the student writings program. 
The wonderful booklet was printed by Missouri Employers Mutual, and they have our deep appreciation for all they do within our community. To highlight the Student Writings Program and the Young Voices of Columbia, we would like to present a video produced by Columbia's City Channel, featuring a selection of students whose writings are in the booklet. In school, I see people, lots of people. I see that he has long hair and she has short hair. I see people from Asia, Europe, South America, and Africa. I see people that like board games, people that like video games. If we were not different, how could we tell each other apart? If I was the same as everyone else, then I couldn't tell myself apart from the person next to me. The world needs diversity to live, and we're not dead yet. Inclusion is where you show others your strengths through your personality, not through the way you look. Inclusion is like what Martin Luther King Jr. said when he wished that all his children would grow up in a place where people would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Inclusion is where your child is playing with a child that has two moms and their friend has two dads. Inclusion is when you lend a helping hand to a person that has disabilities or needs some help. Inclusion is when you listen to others' important thoughts about religion as well as what they believe to be true in a discussion. Inclusion is when both genders are viewed as powerful and capable of anything. Inclusion is when you invite everyone to a party to dance and you encourage them to celebrate and to be strong and brave. They say that the melting pot is a glorified assimilation of all types of different groups. So let's sit back as we get fed with food for thought like grandma soups. Let us sit in our seats to learn something new. In the university of diversity to overcome adversity a breakthrough, let us renew our view to a vision of a world of lost identity. How we've become pleasantly, selfishly, separately of black and white wrong and right, sinners and sin, women and men, good and evil with definite strife and upheaval, a continuous cycle of the flesh. We all know that Martin had a dream and some of us are still in our sleep, laying on our backs on the concrete as they watch us scream as if our bloodstream has a different flow of color. So we need to look out for our brothers, keep in close contact with our mothers, and teach our daughters that they can make the same pay as men and not just minimum wage, that you can never stop learning after any age because no matter if you are poor or rich, the book of life you hold in your hands for you to write always has a blank page. So let's break out of this mental cage. Just because someone's sexual orientation does not fit within your equation of one plus one equals two, shouldn't cause an invasion in the rooms of their minds simply because you had no clue. How about you take not only a step, but run a mile in their shoes? No matter which political view, stand firm to what you believe is true, but never choke someone's words until they turn blue, because your actions can oftentimes leave residue. You long for equality. Without a pure definition of this thing called identity, lost in a stream of obscenity, never in complete serenity. A thought in our minds of perfection causing confusion. A conclusion that inclusion is all an illusion. But every color, creed, view, opinion, ways, and faith, all like instruments, all different but each a participant playing with great sounds of magnificence. That is diversity and the beautiful music that you hear playing is us all together, a symphony. One of the reasons why Columbia is often recognized as one of the nation's best cities is because we have leadership that recognizes and promotes diversity and inclusion. For this, 
the presentation of the 20th Annual Columbia Values Diversity Awards, we are honored to have our mayor, Brian Treese. Well, good morning. Each year, the City of Columbia gives both an individual award and a group award to persons and organizations whose work in our community exemplifies that of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. This year's nominees are listed in your program along with previous award winners, and a panel of judges selected by the planning committee is charged with choosing the Columbia Values Diversity Award winners. This year's judges are Ken Green, Dominic King, Melody Marks, Clyde Ruffin, and James Witt. Their decisions are based on the criteria of promoting an appreciation of diversity and cultural understanding in our community. Community work which exemplifies the teachings of Dr. King and fostering individual dignity in racial equality, understanding, and peacemaking, and problem solving through nonviolence. And lastly, engagement in this activity for an extended period of time with a concentration of significant activity in Columbia in the preceding year. Columbia has so many people that work for the equality of all, so choosing from so many diverse deserving individuals is um, a difficult and challenging job. That's why it's with great pleasure that I now present the 2017 Columbia Values Diversity Awards, and I want to begin with the group award. Would representatives of the Diversity Awareness Partnership please come forward? Diversity Awareness Partnership has shown a commitment to promoting the appreciation for cultural understanding in our community by connecting and collaborating with others on issues surrounding diversity and inclusion. In the spring of 2015, Diversity Awareness Partnership launched their first regional expansion by opening a branch in Columbia. And led by Nikki Magruder, the expansion came at an important time in our community for more concerted and sustained efforts for diversity and inclusion to improve communities, not just like Columbia, but across Missouri and throughout our country. Diversity Awareness Partnership offers three pillars of impact to our community through training and education and youth programs and awareness campaigns. This organization exemplifies the determination of Martin Luther King Jr. by having those hard conversations and being creative in their programs in order to build a more inclusive community. Dr. King challenged individuals to make those small changes that create bigger change. And that's exactly what Diversity Awareness Partnership does every day. Please join me in recognizing Nikki Magruder and the Diversity Awareness Partnership. And this year, there are two winners of the individual award. First, would Bill Thompson please come forward? It's 
Bill still here? <laughs> While someone locates Bill Thompson, <laughs> I want to visit with you about Bill. Mr. Thompson demonstrates the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. through his compassion and concern for everyone in our community. His commitment to preserving the cultural heritage of Columbia and his selfless service to our many community programs make all of us the benefactors of his work in our community. Bill is retiring from the city of Columbia in March of this year. He has spent 35 years of service to Columbia Parks and Recreation Department, providing direction to youth, teaching positive activities through recreation, and providing a safe space for kids to learn and have fun. Some of the programs Bill has been involved with in creating and supporting over the years are names that we all know. The Care Program for Kids, Moonlight Hoops, and many of the special events at Douglas Park. The Douglas Bulldog Baseball Program for Kids, the Black and White Ball, the Armory Summer Camp, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial and Candle Walk, Candlelight Walk on Monday. And in addition, Bill was one of the original members of the Blind Boone Heritage Foundation. And near to my heart, Bill is a local expert in African American history. He's recently completed work with the Boone County Historical Society to further their collection and information regarding the black history of Columbia. And as you heard this morning, Bill is also a talented musician and continues to play at churches and at public and private events, including our event this morning. His selfless service to our community exemplifies the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King. Please join me in recognizing Bill Thompson. And now for our second winner of the individual award, would Carla London please come forward? <laughs> Carla London exemplifies the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. through the promotion of peace and understanding and reconciliation in our community. Carla is the Columbia Public School District's Director for Student Services. Part of her job is to coordinate the district's suspension center, which helps students continue their education while serving their suspension. This center helps kids be more of a success, and Carla often finds alternatives for those students who have limited options. Apart from her day job, it's the work that Carla does for our community outside of her primary responsibilities that make her deserving of our recognition today. Carla serves on the board of the Nora Stewart Early Learning Center. She leads equity trainings for university and community partners. She facilitates restorative practices trainings with community groups so that bridges can be restored where there was once an abyss. Carla makes certain that every one of Columbia Public Schools' 400 first year, second year, and third year teachers learn about their own identities as well as the identities of their students and colleagues including race and class and gender and sexual orientation and religion and ability. Every day before and after her day ends, Carla London is committed to making our community a better place. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a civil rights leader who not only did not accept no, he sought to find a better yes. 
And that's exactly what Carla London does in our community every single day. Congratulations. Thank all of you for your presence here today. It's a great testament to our community and how we truly value diversity. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Trees, and congratulations to the winners of this year's awards. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Naomi Tutu. The challenges of growing up black and female in apartheid South Africa have been the foundation of Nantombi Naomi Tutu's life as an activist for human rights. <coughs> Tutu is the third child of Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Nomulisa Leah Tutu. She was born in South Africa and had the opportunity to live in many communities and countries. She was educated in Swaziland, the US, and England, and has divided her adult life between South Africa and the United States. Growing up as the daughter of has offered Naomi Tutu many opportunities and challenges in her life. Most important of these has been the challenge to follow her own path and role in building a better world. She has taken up the challenge and channeled the opportunities to raise her voice as a champion for the dignity of all. Her professional experience ranges from being a development consultant in West Africa to being program coordinator for programs on race and gender and gender-based violence in education at the African Gender Institute at the University of Cape Town. In addition, Tutu has taught at the University of Hartford, University of Connecticut, and Brevard College in North Carolina. She served as program coordinator for the historic Race Relations Institute at Fisk University and was a part of the Institute's delegation to the World Conference Against Racism in Durban. She started her political speaking as a college student at Berea College in Kentucky in the 1970s when she was invited to speak at churches, community groups, and colleges and universities about her experiences growing up in apartheid South Africa. As well as speaking and preaching, Naomi Tutu has established Noziswi Consulting, whose guiding principle is to bring different groups together to learn from and celebrate their differences and acknowledge their shared humanity. As part of this work, she has led truth and reconciliation workshops for groups dealing with different types of conflict. You can read more about Naomi Tutu's life and work in the bio in your program. It is our pleasure to welcome to our celebration, Naomi Tutu.
Good morning. Oh my goodness. I was sitting out here and from the invocation on, it's been hard to keep the tears from coming down. Y'all should have warned me before I came this morning that I shouldn't put on eyeliner, okay? <laughs> now you've just messed up my makeup. <sighs> but thank you so much, Columbia. I have been impressed this whole morning and the young people's writings, isn't that the hope? Doesn't that give us all hope that this is, this is the generation. These are the people we have been waiting for. When I thought about the Martin Luther King breakfast and particularly thinking about your, your theme, building a more inclusive Columbia, I thought putting those two together, it is about building a beloved community. Right? I mean, what is more inclusive than a beloved community? And what is it that Dr. King challenged each of us to be working for, if not a beloved community? So what does it mean for us today to say we are about the work of building a beloved community. And the fun part about building a beloved community is events like this. We have a wonderful breakfast, we get together, we eat good food. I didn't get my coffee, but that's okay. That's okay. We hear, <laughs> thank you, we hear inspiring words from young people. We hear prayers that, that lift us and challenge us. And we see members of our community and, and some people who we, we don't see very often. And we have an opportunity at a breakfast like this to encourage one another. We have the opportunity at gatherings like this to, to look back at the work that we have done over the year and, and to give credit to those who have made a difference in our community. So that is, for me, the fun part of building a beloved community. It is the opportunity to look around the room and see what our day should look like every day. Surrounded by people who believe our community is a great place to be and yet could be even greater to be surrounded by people who recognize that the sacrifices made by people like Dr. King were not the end of the story. They weren't even the beginning of the story. They were the middle of the story and then our part continues the middle of the story because the end of the story can only be the beloved community. So we gather today and we celebrate and we encourage one another. But that's the fun. But the real work is the work that we carry out day after day. It is what we heard in the poem and essay that our two high school students spoke of. The acts of kindness that make a difference even in one person's life. It is acknowledging that wherever we are, we can make a difference in how people experience our community. So very often when we think about people like Dr. Martin Luther King, we, 
we remember him the way that we see him in videos, right? We see the I have a dream speech and, and in our minds so very often we imagine that he sprung out from his mother's womb, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., ready to lead the march on Washington. And we, we forget that there was a lifetime of education and struggle and encouragement and mentorship and disappointment and failure that brought Dr. King to who we know him to be. And I think it is important that we remember that, that we remember that Dr. King was a human being like any of us. I know that um, with my father as a Nobel Peace Prize winner, people will often say to me, what is it like to have Desmond Tutu as a father? Like, well, I've only had one, so <laughs> I don't know how he stacks up on the fatherhood log. Um, I don't know who to compare him with. But I can tell you that he doesn't wear the Nobel medal every day. <laughs> and when he has breakfast, we don't say good morning, Nobel Peace Prize winner. <laughs> and he says stupid stuff sometimes. <laughs> and manages, which I really appreciate, to embarrass his grandchildren over and over and over. So, all that to say that we need to remind ourselves that those whom we look up to are just as human as we are. That there wasn't something born in them that determined that they would lead movements for justice that very often it was about the people around them who encouraged them to believe in a better world. My father talks about one of the most amazing experiences in his life was as a child walking down the street with my grandmother, his mother, who was a domestic worker, and having a white priest simply take off his hat and say good morning. And for a child in apartheid South Africa, a black child, child of a domestic worker, to see a white man just simply show respect to an older black woman opened his eyes to what the world could be. So it wasn't that Martin Luther King or Desmond Tutu sprung out ready to lead struggles for justice. It is that they had experiences and people who showed them what a wonderful world this could be. And they took that and believed and believed not only that the world could be wonderful, but that they had a role in making it that way. And each of us has exactly the same opportunity. Now, we're not all gonna win Nobel Peace Prizes. I know, because I've nominated myself about 15 times. <laughs> No response, nothing. Not even a letter saying, we received your nomination, stop bothering us, okay? We're not all going to lead marches. We are not all going to be those whom the world remembers for our actions. But we can all be the people that someone 
remembers. Because my father doesn't even know the name of the priest who took off his hat to his mother. But that story, that experience stayed with him throughout the struggle against apartheid. So we can all be that person who is a catalyst for someone else even to do amazing things in the world. But even more than that, we can each be the one who does at least one amazing thing. Now, I've said that, you know, Dr. King didn't spring into the world Dr. King, but neither was he the myth that we have built up. You know, when we talk about Dr. King now, all people talk about is the I have a dream speech and talk about what a, a, a bringer together of people Dr. King was, which is true. But at the time that Dr. King was doing this, he was vilified, he was imprisoned, he was beaten, he was called a communist agitator, he was called a troublemaker. And so it is important, and I say this especially to our young people, that when people say you are causing trouble, just say, in the way of Dr. King, Dr. King was not one who said, peace, peace, where there is no peace. Dr. King loved this country, loved his community, loved this world, and loved it enough that he was willing to point out what was wrong. We cannot make things right if we pretend that they're not wrong. If we... If we are really about building a beloved community, we have to first say where it is our community is not beloved. We have to first be willing to point out those places of pain, of oppression, of blindness, of evil. We have to be willing to say this, this is wrong, this is racism, this is sexism, this is homophobia, this is ableism. And as I got my AARP card, this is ageism. <laughs> that we have to be willing to start the building by pointing out the flaws in our structure. Because if we are truly about building a beloved community, we have to do it from the foundations up. We have to be those who are willing to be in the streets. We have to be those who are willing to call out acts of violence and discrimination. We can't simply yell, peace, peace, where there is no peace. I come from a faith tradition that from the days of ancient Israel 
had prophets who said, thus says the Lord. Stop coming up in here sacrificing for me and then abusing the widow and the orphan. Don't come into my house and say, yay, Lord, and then go out and walk over the poor and the oppressed. I come from that faith tradition. And in almost all faith traditions that I have had the opportunity to meet and talk to people from, there is those same lessons. Don't come and worship whoever uh, you say you worship and then abuse your brother and sister because there is no creator who welcomes the abuse of any of her creation. We come this morning, and this is the fun time of building an inclusive community. But we come to the fun times to give us the energy and the courage to go out and do the real work of building a beloved community. It is in this space that we get energy and comfort, but it can't just be comfort. It must also be the place that pushes us out into the community to do the real work of building. And so it's not people like me who come and speak here at your breakfast who are building the beloved community in Colombia. The people building the beloved community, uh, was it Carla and Bill, whom you honored this morning. It is the members of your diversity community who challenge every day accepted practice if that accepted practice oppresses one group or another. It is the children in your schools who wrote a ama- this is what I was doing during breakfast too, was reading those essays. And I mean, how can we not have a beloved community when our children tell us things like, if I were exactly like the person sitting next to me, how could I tell myself apart? Forget about the world telling me apart. How could I know that I was someone special if I wasn't different from the person sitting next to me? I come from a family where I knew I was different very early on because I have an older sister who, when we were growing up, we called her Saint Teresa of the blessed can do no wrong. (laughs) And you know her, you all have one in your family. (laughs) And some of you laughing are the saint whoever's. (laughs) We know you, Uh uh-huh. Always doing the right thing, never in trouble. And we went to the same school. And my mother swore that at that school, they actually had a secretary whose job, her only job, was to write letters to my parents (laughs) about me. (laughs) And I was constantly in trouble. And in fact, last year, I went back to London and was spending time with, with some people who I hadn't seen since I'd been in high school with them there. And that was what they kept saying. Do you remember we used to sit outside the principal's office all the time? I was like, don't say that. My children are listening. The principal was asking me for advice. That was what was going on. And I remember 
One, one time when it had got so bad that my parents were called in to the principal's office too. And as, after the big conversation, and I still have nightmares, um, after the big conversation as we were walking out, I said to my parents, oh, yeah, I know, you want me to be more like Teresa, bless could do no wrong. Um, and, and my mother and father said, no, no, Teresa is Teresa and you are you. And what we would like you to be is the best you. That we know our children are different and have different gifts. But we would like you to take your gifts and be a better you, not someone else. And that was a gift that I continue to hold on to, especially because I can say to my parents whenever I mess up, remember you said you don't want me to be her. <laughs> you want me and you've got me. <laughs> but that, that, that for me was the place I knew, I learned that our differences are important to the survival of our families, our communities, our countries, our world, ourselves. We are called to be different. I also come from a faith community that tells us that we are the body of Christ and that the body has many different members that have many different responsibilities and how ridiculous the body would be if it were all eyes. And that that is true of our faith community is true of our world. It is true of our cities. It is true of our communities. That how ridiculous it would be if we were all the same. How much we would fail at most activities if we were all the same. We are called not to build a world of a likeness. We are called to build a world in which our diversity is recognized for the strength and the gift that it is to the world. We are called to look upon the building of a beloved community to mean that we look at one another and are grateful that you are not me. You are not like me. And that in that difference, we offer one another hope. We offer one another a new way. We offer one another skills and gifts that the world needs but could never find in one person in one group, in one gender, in one faith tradition. You come this morning into this space to remind yourselves that this, this room represents Colombia. People of different races, different classes, different countries of origin, different ages, different ideas. And that it is this that is the beginning 
of a beloved community. I thank you for wanting to build a beloved community. I thank you for being here this morning, but most of all, I thank you that when you walk out of these doors, you will do the real work of changing our whole world into a beloved community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tutu, for being a part of our community's celebration and sharing your words with us. This concludes the 2017 Columbia Values Diversity Celebration. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you next year. <laughs>